Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to see how to install Ubuntu 20.04 alongside Windows. So we'll have a dual boot configuration and we'll be able to use any of them. Let's start by opening ubuntu.com. Here we can download the latest version of Ubuntu, either for server or for desktop, but in this video, we're going to focus on the desktop version. Here we can click on download. Here we can see 20.04, which is the latest long-term support version and 20.10, which is the latest version overall, but it's not long-term support. So I'm going to go with 20.04. There are some options to make a contribution to several Ubuntu-related projects while the file is being downloaded. I already have the installation file, so I'm going to stop the download. Next thing we need is Rufus, and it can be downloaded from rufus.ie. Once you download Rufus as well, start it, You will have to confirm that you want to allow it to make changes to the computer. You're going to need a USB flash drive, something like this. And once you plug it in, Rufus recognizes it. I already have a USB flash drive plugged in. What Rufus does is prepares the USB flash drive to be used as an installation media. So let's do it again for the sake of the video. We need to select the ISO file, that's the one we just downloaded from ubuntu.com. Then I'm just going to click on start and leave the rest of the options as they are. Rufus is going to wipe everything from the USB flash drive, so make sure you're okay with that. Then click on okay. And it's going to take a while. Once Rufus is done, close it. Now I am going to install Ubuntu on an external USB flash drive. Another one, not the one that I'm using as the installation media, but another one. Now you can install it on your hard drive, but I'm not going to do it in this video. I'll just use an external USB flash drive. Let's restart the computer. When the Dell logo will appear, I'll quickly tap F12. Here's the logo, I quickly tapped F12 and I see the menu. Let's start by going to the BIOS setup. We need to do several things here. First, we'll go to the system configuration. Under SATA operation, there are two options, AHCI and RAID-ON. The problem with this installation is that Linux only works in AHCI mode and Windows will only work in RAID-ON mode. So what we're going to do is start by changing it to HCI and Windows will temporarily not work, but we'll fix it later. So let's change it to HCI. Next thing will be secure boot. And I'm going to make sure that secure boot enable is not checked. Let's exit the BIOS setup. And again, I'm going to quickly tap F12 when the, the logo will appear. We can see that one of the boot options is SanDisk. That's the installation media we created with Rufus. Let's plug in the second USB flash drive, the one that will serve as the installation destination, where Linux will reside. And let's hit enter. And I'm going to choose install Ubuntu. Choose your language. You can connect to a Wi-Fi network, but I'm not going to do it now. I'll go with minimal installation and install third-party software. Since I want to install on the external flash drive, I'm going to select something else. NVMe is the internal hard drive and SDA is the external USB flash drive. The installation media itself is not displayed on the list. I'm going to remove all of the partitions from the USB flash drive. And now I only have free space there. On this free space, I'm going to allocate two partitions. 
One will be swap, which is disk space Linux uses if it's running out of RAM. The second will be the main partition. So let's start with the swap partition. And two gigabytes should be enough. And I'm going to select swap from the list. The second partition I'm going to allocate is the main partition. And I'm going to allocate everything that's left. And I'm going to use it as ext4. As for mount point, I'm going to select forward slash. Notice that since I don't want to make any changes to my internal hard drive, I didn't change anything there. And I'm going to use the hard drive for the bootloader installation. Okay, let's go on with the installation. And once again, we can see that I'm only making changes to SDA. No changes to NVMe, which is the internal hard drive. Select your location. Type in your name, your username, and your password. The installation is taking place. It's going to take a while. Okay, the installation is done, and we now have Ubuntu installed on our USB flash drive. Let's click on Restart Now. We need to remove the installation medium. I'm going to only remove the USB flash drive that served as the installation media. That's the one we prepared with Rufus. But the other one, the one on which we installed Ubuntu, I'm going to leave at its place. As I said before, because we changed the SATA operation from RAID ON to AHCI, Windows will not load now. So let's fix it. Let's press Enter, and then let's press F12 again once the Dell logo is displayed. Let's get back to the BIOS setup. The reason that Windows will not load while in AHCI is that it lacks a driver. To install this driver, let's get back to RAID ON. That means that Linux will not load, but we're only doing it temporarily. So let's move back to RAID ON, install the missing driver, and then we'll get back to AHCI, and both Windows and Linux will work in AHCI. Let's tap F12 again. We can see that we now have two boot options. One is Ubuntu, that's from the USB flash drive, and the other one is Windows. Let's load Windows. We're not going to manually install the drivers that we need for Windows to work in AHCI. We will let Windows do that for us. But if we want Windows to do it for us, we need to load Windows in safe mode. So let's log into Windows and ask it to load in safe mode. To do that, let's search for configuration. And let's select system configuration. In the boot tab, I'm going to choose safe boot. Then OK. And let's restart the computer. Let's tap F12 again. Now I'm going to move back to AHCI. Since Windows is in safe boot, it will load successfully. So let's do that. And we succeeded to load Windows while SATA is configured as AHCI. Let's log in and turn off the safe boot. So configuration, and let's select normal startup. That's it, Windows is configured. Let's restart the computer and load Ubuntu. As you see, since I didn't tap F12 now and just let the computer boot with a default option, it loaded Ubuntu because it was the first option in the boot options. And now we can see the grab menu. And here we have Ubuntu and advanced options. And we can also load Windows from here. So let's just go with Ubuntu.
and Ubuntu loaded successfully, ready for use. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.